Thanks for staying with us. Now we start from the Supreme Court because jubilant scenes at the Supreme Court erupted as the NPP MP celebrated the favorable ruling from the Supreme Court, ultimately restoring the majority status in Parliament. Well, we know that the Supreme Court, by a 5-2 majority, ruled that the Speaker's declaration of the four seats vacant was unconstitutional. Let's listen to the Chief Justice, Getrit Tokono, and then we'll be back for some analysis. By court, in, in a majority decision of 5-2, Lovelace Johnson JSC and Amadou Tanko JSC dissenting on the issue of jurisdiction, the plaintiff's action succeeds. The full reasons and orders of the court shall be filed with the registrar by close of date tomorrow, 13th November 2024. This is the judgment of the court. Well, that was the Chief Justice. Thankfully, Parliamentary Affairs Correspondent Kukwa Santi was in court for us. He joins us in the studio. He's a key member of the Legal Affairs Dex. Kukwa, tell me about the decision by the court, starting by the two other individuals who had a different opinion about today's ruling. So, Faustina, Justice Avril Lovelace Johnson mm. and Justice Amadou Tanko are the two judges who dissented. And they dissented on the basis of jurisdiction. That is, the Supreme Court did not have the power to even entertain this suit in the first place. So this does not go into the facts of the matter. Mm. They thought that the Supreme Court should not have even started hearing this matter because it did not have jurisdiction. Mm. But again, five other judges overruled them. Five of them, led by the Chief Justice herself, Madame Getshu Tokono, Justice Maria Mawusu, Justice Samokwami Adibu, Justice Yao Dakwansari, and Justice Yao Enes Gaewu. Those five... Supreme Court judges overruled Tanko and Lovelace Johnson, who took the view that the court did not have jurisdiction. But the Chief Justice and the others disagreed. They believed that the court was properly seized with the matter and went into the discussion. We expect that tomorrow, the, by, the Chief Justice says, by close of day tomorrow, mm. the full ruling of the court should be available so that persons can read and get to know the reasoning behind the individual decisions. Of and we're looking case. forward to that, so that it gives us an idea as to why they took this decision. But the Attorney General was key at this whole issue, and then what was his reaction after the ruling? According to Godfrey Debo Adame, listen, persons who disagree know what to do. Mm. He believes that this is such a wide margin, 5-2, and it's not a 4-3 or 3-4, that one would say it gives room for review and other things. He believes that the court has been emphatic, and that this is a country of constitutionalism, Anyone who disagrees know what to do, but he expects that the speaker and the others will comply. Listen. Anybody has to do is to respect the constitution. That is the mark of a civilized democratic order. It leaves no room for any argument whatsoever. And the majority decision, very big majority, clear majority, five to two. It's not as if it was a narrow majority, three to four or four to three, that anyone can say, well, there, there, there's some room for kind of review anything at all. But the point I'm making is that whenever the court speaks. It's such a clear and emphatic order. Even if it's a very narrow majority, that's the decision of the court. And that decision must be respected. And I'm saying that it will result in a degeneration of our society and a destruction of our democratic order for anybody at all to refuse to comply with the order of the Supreme Court. And I think that's non-negotiable. It's something that we must all respect. I have heard some um, statements by certain political actors to defend that uh, the case ought to be done and that there ought to be negotiation and all that. I'm quite surprised because indeed, firstly, I did not hear such expression of, of um, a willingness to negotiate and all or maybe such instruction to the speaker or direct suggestion to the speaker for negotiation and all. When the speaker started embarking on this act. And I think that for me it's very important that the Supreme Court ruled upon this matter because it is something that had been um, occurring in this country, the tendency for it to occur really was there. The tendency for it to occur again was there. It was necessary, or it was necessary that the Supreme Court came to this clear conclusion and determination of the matter, the meaning of Article 97, Clause 1, Paragraphs G and H. And I think we must all respect it. Well, that was the Attorney General, Godfrey Yubardami. But Kukwa Sansi is still mm. with us. Kukwa, one happy man today was the Majority Leader, Alexander yes. Feyomakin. His status is no longer in question. Yes, in fact, he sought, to, he sought to ask questions about how people are going to refer to him and all. He has a message to the Speaker of Parliament and the NDC MPs. 
obey what the Supreme Court has decided today. Let the House reconvene. Let's do the urgent government business. So he says he expects the Speaker of Parliament to reconvene Parliament and ask the NDC MPs to take the left-hand side, that is the minority side. So they, in the NPP, will take the majority side, a place they've been sitting in the last four years. You can only thank God and also it's a moment for all of us to rally around the choice we made in 1992, democracy. Democracy requires decency and that is a path the MPP majority caucus took to ensure that we do right to the law. Nothing more except to say that we expect our colleagues on the other side, including Mr. Speaker, to respect the outcome of this case so that we move to get we move on as a nation. All we have is a piece of the country, all we have is our democracy, and in West Africa and in Africa as a whole, Ghana shines in the eyes of the people in terms of democracy. So this is another feat we have uh, achieved. And we must celebrate it. It's not a matter of MPP against NDC. It's a matter of constitutional, you know, uh, interpretation. And the court has given its verdict. We should all respect it and move on. Thank you very much. I think. I, on the, do, you, do you expect the speaker to recall Parliament on its own volition? Um, him this emphatic. Um, let's let the lawyers deal with the issues of law. I think that all we want is peace in the country and we chose peace and today we've achieved peace majority leader alexander fayomark in there he says they chose peace but i can see katie hammond in short what was his reaction so right after that i dragged him to the side mm -hmm. i spoke to him about what he made of this he said the speaker had tyrannical tendencies and that he wants the speaker to really comply with the ruling. he also has some really funny moments in there you watch him <laughs> It's the Speaker of Parliament is supposed to be the custodian, supposed to be custodian of the Constitution. 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 This man decides that he would not respect the Constitution. Not only that, he would not respect the apex court of the land. It's, out, it's outlandish. I haven't seen anything like that in, in, in my life. And I, I heard this, this, this argument. He respects the supremacy of the Constitution, but he doesn't respect the supremacy of the Supreme Court. What, 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 what does it mean? I, 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 so that is what somebody is saying, what do I have against Babi? My very good friend, everybody accepts, I mean he's a class prefect, in there. you all know that. But the point is that I do not agree that a person of his caliber would not respect the ruling of the Supreme Court. Now it has been very crystally put by the Supreme Court. Court. The motion, the, the filed by the rate filed by our majority leader of the House has succeeded. The Speaker Babbing has absolutely no choice now to comply. Tell Atu and his uh, his uh, followers to move move back to where they originated onto our seat. We expect that to be done without fail. That's that's how simple this matter has become. Babbing must learn to respect the authority of the Supreme Court. Who's up? Funny moments there. But quick, well, the question remains, what's next? Because the NPP caucus, they held a news conference today. Well, yes, um, Afran Kanod and Prenku, mm. they've been very shy, coy about the calls for the parliament to reconvene. Mm. They believe that this ruling by the Supreme Court must sink in. The Speaker of Parliament perhaps must take his own decisions. But I get a sense that if the speaker does not act, they will force a recall. I understand signatures have already been gathered. As soon as it's practicable, the, 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 the caucus is going to write to the speaker requesting an urgent sitting. They've already put out a statement also. Apart from that press conference they did, they expect parliament to sit again. Mm. But as whether well, the speaker should do that or they are going to recall, they're leaving all that to the speaker for now. And that is what they are seeing. The court, of course, in tomorrow's judgment, we'll get to know if they made any consequential orders and declarations. We don't know now. This was a very skeletal ruling that, that, that the court made for Steve. Thank you, Kweko Asante, for bringing us updates from the Supreme Court today. Well, it's time now to cross over to my colleague, Elton Brewer. He's not in the studio, he's on the ground. He's at the residence 
of Justice William Atuguba, and he is a former Supreme Court judge. He's speaking his thoughts about today's ruling and other matters arising. We'll take you to him shortly, but we've been hearing from Roxanne Nelson Dafiamepo. Um, He's on the NDC side. He's been reacting to all that has happened in court today. He says he's saddened. Sad by the decision of the court. I think the court fell into an error of some law. What is the what is the evidence for the court? Is the court saying that Cynthia Morrison is not running as an independent candidate in Aguna West, even though she is presently the MPC sponsored member of parliament for Aguna West? Mm. Is the evidence before the court that the independent member for Kobina now is, is the sponsored candidate by the NPP under their symbol and college for mm. Kobina? Is the court saying that the evidence that Kujua, Kujua, Kujua Samoa, by Kujua Sante, who is the NPP sponsored member of parliament for who is now an independent candidate? So, unless I see the reason, I, I, I don't know what the court is saying. Mm. In we, any case, mm. no, in any case, a decision has to be taken by parliament to give effect to this ruling. Roxanne Nelson, Daphia Mepo there. Well, let's take you now to my colleague Elton Bube. He is interacting with Justice William Atukuba, retired. He is a former Supreme Court judge. He's speaking his thoughts on some of the key issues that have happened today. Let's take you live there. Here from the home of retired Supreme Court judge William Atukuba. And it's about the the outcome of or the decision of the Supreme Court uh, this morning regarding whether or not four seats declared vacant by the Speaker of Parliament should stand. And the court decision is quite clear. 5-2 uh, in favor of the application put before uh, the court by the Majority Leader, uh, Alexander Fenyo Markin, and of course uh, the MPP side in Parliament. Now in the 5-2 majority decision, uh, the Supreme Court interpreted Article 971G and H of the Constitution to mean that an MP vacates his seat only during the term of Parliament and not during the future Parliament. The effects of the court decision means that the ruling by the Speaker declaring the four seats vacant was unconstitutional and therefore the four MPs have by law not vacated their seats. So how are you reacting to this? But then we can get the reaction of an expert who has seen it all, he's sat through uh, the, most of these landmark cases at the Supreme Court. And he has a better understanding of what went into the decision and whether or not they got it right. Remember, as we await the reason behind the ruling uh, tomorrow. Uh, Retired Justice, you're welcome to the post. Thank you. And uh, if you can kindly uh, bring up the microphone. So okay. I, I'm sure you follow the news. Well, First, let me get your initial reaction mm. to the decision by the court 5-2, yeah. uh, you yeah. know, saying that what the speaker did essentially was unconstitutional. Mm. Well, um, <coughs> I think earlier on <coughs> I had spoken on this issue mm. when uh, Afeo McCain filed his writ. Uh, I think I've uh, forgotten the TV station. TV, TV. I think, yeah, and, 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 and you also spoke to us as well. Oh, okay. Mm. And uh, I express my views at length mm. on the issue of jurisdiction. Right. Uh, well, I still stand by it. Um, I cannot dilate too much on the issue because the reasons are yet to come. Are yet to come, and uh, with court matters, you have to tread very carefully mm. uh, because of the law of contempt. Mm. Uh, although personally, well, I think so far the court, after some time, they've been more liberal about <laughs> that issue of contempt, <laughs> right? <laughs> which is better for uh, except in situations where. People go way overboard. Uh, <clears throat> as far as the 
issue of jurisdiction. I think it was just the jurisdictional matter. The reason why the two abstained? Yes. Right. Uh, but the majority said what that the speaker had aired. Essentially. Uh, in uh, declaring the seats vacant. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think uh, next time you get the, the text mm. of it uh, for me to be able to uh, speak more confidently. Mm, but, but in terms of the, the jurisdiction, yes. uh, is it a case that they didn't have the right to go into the case from the word go? Because this was a matter that, was, that invited them to interpret the Constitution. That yes. is the, the, the duty of the Supreme Court. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, you see, constitutional matters are very involved. There is a whole uh, spider web mm. of provisions um, which stand, if you take them in isolation, uh, yes, they mean what <laughs> you have read. Mm. Uh -huh. But they are not intended to operate in isolation mm. because the Constitution is a whole legal framework. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not uh, intended to create. Mm -hmm. I see. <clears throat> it's not in intended to create inherent uh, strife or conflict, you know, uh, amongst his own provisions and uh, the uh, pursuant interpretations of them. Mm. So there must be cohesion. Uh, there must uh, be read as a kind of uh, studied and structured uh, document designed to put in place uh, a certain framework of government. Mm. Uh, so, <clears throat> let me give you just a small example. Right. If we look at um, Article One Twenty Five. Mm, I, I can I can help you with this once you once you go through there. Yeah, One Twenty Five One also One Twenty Six One Twenty Five. One or two thereabouts. <coughs> so, <clears throat> okay. One twenty five one. Justice emanates from the people and shall be administered in the name of the Republic by the judiciary. We shall be independent and subject only to this constitution. Now, three, uh, that's clause one. Mm. Clause three, the judicial power of Ghana shall be vested in the judiciary. Accordingly, neither the president nor parliament nor any organ or agency of the president or parliament shall have or be given final judicial power. Now, more, <coughs> the point is clause four. No, no, clause uh, five. The judiciary shall have jurisdiction in all matters, civil and criminal, including matters relating to this constitution and such other jurisdiction as parliament may by law confer on it. Mm. And then listen to this. Uh, composition, a mode of uh, composition, a mode or exercise of power of judiciary. One, two, six, clause one. The judiciary shall consist of A, the superior course of judicature, comprising the Supreme Court, the Court of Appeal, and the High Court and Regional Tribunals. B, such lower courts or tribunals as Parliament may by law establish. Two, the superior course shall be superior course of record and shall have the power to commit for contempt to themselves. And all such powers as were vested in the court of record immediately before they come into force of this constitution. So you see that this article 125 
clause five. Right. It's saying that the judiciary shall have uh, power or jurisdiction in all matters, mm. civil and criminal. All. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then you've seen the composition of the judiciary consists of the Supreme Court and all this kind, down to the lower ones. Now, one would have thought that any court at all, which is part of the judiciary, can exercise all the, <laughs> the jurisdictions in mm. civil and criminal matters because the powers are given to the judiciary. Right. They are part of the judiciary. Mm. But that's where the complexity comes because as you go further down, you see, as uh, Moisechi J explained in some case in the 80s, now, yes, this power is there. It's given to the judiciary. But the power has been shared out hmm, mm. to the various branches of the judiciary. Mm. So it doesn't mean that once you are part of the judiciary, you can exercise all those powers because they've been distributed. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So you exercise them according to the allocation distributed to you. You see the complexity there. Right. And so when you look at the blanket statement, uh, judiciary shall have uh, the jurisdiction of all mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. criminal matters. And the judiciary is uh, stated in terms of the court system. And when you look at it, I say, oh, any court at all can exercise all those words. Mm. But as I said, the subsequent provisions are there. The, the, the question people are asking is whether the Supreme Court yes. erred in going into this case at all. That's what I'm coming to. Mm -hmm. uh, that if you look at <coughs> Article 130, clauses 1 and 2, in Article 2, uh, if you read those uh, on their face, the vast exclusive jurisdiction concerning the interpretation and enforcement of the Constitution. Mm. You know, exclusive jurisdiction, except in the fundamental human rights. Mm. So, Prime Minister, you think that in all matters concerning interpretation and enforcement, except when it comes to fundamental human rights, the Supreme Court uh, can interpret and enforce any matter, however arising. Mm -hmm. That's where the trouble comes. Not however arising, because uh, <laughs> the subsequent provisions, for example, have given uh, jurisdiction to the High Court in parliamentary elections, right. including this question of vacancy. Mm -hmm. They've given it to the High Court. Right. Notwithstanding Article 130, notwithstanding Article 2. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Then also, you look at chieftaincy, uh, jurisdiction, chieftaincy matters. The Constitution has set up the system of chieftaincy tribunals, mm -hmm. the highest being national tribunal. The ordinary courts are excluded from handling chieftaincy matters except when they get to the National House of Chiefs, you are not satisfied, you apply for leave mm -hmm. from the National House to appeal to the Supreme Court, right. only the Supreme Court. Mm. If they refuse, you can apply for leave from the Supreme Court. If you fail, that that's the end of it. So in this case, you, your, your thinking is that the, the High Court should have handled this matter? That is it. But, the, but, 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 so but, 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 but this was a matter that was that, that invited the Supreme Court to interpret. The High Court is not clothed with that powers. Yes. <laughs> There's complexity still. Uh, the, when a matter like this comes up, <clears throat> now I'm saying that what I said it before. Right. And so I'm only saying that I'm standing by what I said. Mm. When they give the reasons tomorrow and I feel persuaded, I can call and say, oh. <laughs> you did work. <laughs> I was wrong. You can do that. But for the meantime, that you have come, the best time would have been tomorrow mm. <laughs> after their reasons. Mm. And we'll do. 
Right, so uh, was it an answer? Justice William Atuguba is my guest. We are looking at, uh, we are getting reaction uh, on the Supreme Court ruling this afternoon. We're explaining. Yes. Uh, <coughs> the same constitution is not unaware mm. of Article 130, clauses 1 and 2. It's not unaware of Article 2, which on their surface have given exclusive views about interpretation and enforcement. Mm. But they've gone nonetheless to make this specific provision. Uh, now, we have a certain maxim of interpretation of statutes which says verba generalia, specialibus non derogant. Mm. As a special provisions, special uh, matters, I mean, general matters, general mm -hmm. words do not override special words. Huh? So if you have a general provision mm -hmm. which standing by itself will also encompass the jurisdiction given to a lower court. Because verba generalia, special most non derogant the general powers will be confined to the area which will not intrude into the special power of the special uh, provision. Mm. That is why <laughs> so articles 130 and 2, these are general provisions. And according to this rule, general provisions don't override specific provisions. And so once the specific power about vacancy of seats uh, is given to the High Court. Mm. The general powers hanging there mm -hmm. cannot override the special uh, provision. Mm. Otherwise, that special provision will be rendered completely hopeless. Meaning the court, the Supreme Court had no business going into this. Yes, I'm coming. <laughs> they have uh, a kind of, what, what do you call it, referential jurisdiction. Right. That's to say, this matter, which is, is a vacancy of parliamentary seat matter, is for the High Court. However, if the parties there contend that some legal provision relating to this matter is, unambigu uh, is ambiguous mm -hmm. and it's a constitutional provision. Then at 132 requires that the High Court will stay the provisions and refer just that issue of interpretation to the Supreme Court. In this case, this was not done. This, this wasn't a, it was a one straight. But this was not exploited. It wasn't exploited. It wasn't exploited. And uh, number two, you see, the question of <laughs> even the referral, mm. eh, when the issue arises, it doesn't mean that any time uh, it's alleged that there's an issue for the interpretation, the High Court automatically must stay the same it will have to consider whether the provision in question is actually ambiguous. Mm. If in his opinion it is not ambiguous, can proceed with the case. But the speaker, can, yes. If a party is satisfied, can go to a school court or supervisory jurisdiction eh, mm. to quash the view of the, the high court and order it to refer that issue to it, or refer the issue to itself mm. for determination. And after determining it, they send that determination to the High Court, and they dispose of the case insofar as uh, the issue requiring interpretation is concerned. Uh, but then the final determination of the matter is from the High Court. Uh, but, uh, Justice, yes. this is a case where an arm of government, yes. the leader of an arm of government, yes. gave a ruling yes. based on his understanding yes. of what the constitution says. Yes. 
and then a member challenges that decision. Yes. Clearly, one will say that the Supreme Court was the avenue or the platform hmm. to bring finality to this matter. Yes, but their finality, does, I mean, is governed by the same provision. Their finality will come when the court, given that, that, that jurisdiction over that specific matter, has difficulty. Or the parties have raised a difficult interpretational matter concerning it. They say, oh, okay, this thing is not that clear. So they are bound to refer to the Supreme Court. That's how the Supreme Court comes in. Mm. That's how the Supreme Court will come in. But not ab initio. That's <laughs> uh, just straight away. Is this the same constitution that has made that provision? And um, when I was on the bench, we did this. Mm. Because, uh, this is Zanato. Huh? Mm. Uh -huh. um, she uh, stood for the primaries of, is it what they do or something? Or can I call it Clotty constituency? Okay, I don't even know the question, but. Call it Clotty constituency. All right. Uh, and she was contesting the NDC primaries with a fellow mm. NDC, I think the incumbent. Mm. Uh -huh. And she won. Now the incumbent challenged her election as the parliamentary candidate in the high court on the ground that at the time she was uh, elected as the parliamentary candidate, she was not a registered voter as required by the party's constitution. Mm -hmm. You see? So they went to the high court to say that her uh, nomination and uh, election was uh, null and void, you know. So they were arguing it various ways. Eventually, uh, some, uh, some young lad that night, Eduzi Tamaklu. Yeah, yeah, Eduzi Tamaklu. Yeah. He brought an application to the Supreme Court challenging the ruling of the High Court. Because the High Court was saying that it was within this position mm. and so on and so on and so on. Right. Some, uh, lengthy ruling. But then when I went through the whole thing, I saw that the substance of the lawyer's arguments, even if they were not directly <laughs> couched that way, mm -hmm. amounted to the contention that there was an issue of interpretation as to whether uh, in view of Article 94, I think, of the Constitution, mm. which uh, governs qualifications for uh, election to Parliament, whether in, in, in that one should have governed the situation. Mm. And if it did, then of course, uh, the party's ruling could not stand. Because at the time they disqualified her, that she was not Oh, uh, the EC had not yet, was far from... But from open, publishing the, the open, opening the process. Yes. You see? Mm. So when they came down, I saw, I saw, oh, man, this was a situation of the need to interpret Article 94. Because... It's a swim law. Right. You, are, you can have your party constitution, you can, even parliament can pass an act, and all, all these are subject to the constitution. Mm. So, 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 so if I may ask, I mean, you are, you are, you are on retirement, but... I, I'm coming. Okay. <laughs> so, and this case was cited by the Supreme Court mm. when they threw out the speaker's application to set aside their earlier uh, ruling and directive. Mm -hmm. Uh, they refer to it, and that's very interesting. Well, it demonstrates quite clearly <laughs> that, oh, sorry, in that situation, this court didn't say uh, the uh, Zanatos opener was wrong to have gone to the high court. Mm -hmm. No, he was right to go there. But when the issue of the proper interpretation of uh, uh, as to when 
a person can properly be said to be disqualified to contest for parliament because of non-registration as a voter mm -hmm. arose. That one was not, uh, it required the interpretation of Article 94 mm -hmm. vis a vis the party's constitution. You know? Mm. So we referred that we said the High Court was wrong to say that I could determine all that issue too. So <clears throat> we stayed the proceedings there and formulated the issue we should have referred to us to ourselves. And then subsequently ruled that, you know, uh, the prop, on the proper interpretation, it is when the EC mm -hmm. opens nominations. Before you can challenge. And not even open on when it has closed, open and closed. Mm -hmm. And you have not registered, but you purport to be a candidate. You can't, they can't challenge. So, 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 so uh, for example, if, 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 well, if you go to mm -hmm. even register, uh, with the EC, and they find that you have not registered. They will accept you. Unless, of course, you quickly go and register before the close of nominations. So, uh, if I should do some deduction here, yes. for example, if this case was brought before you, yes. your, 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 inclin your inclination would have been that the matter should go to the High Court. Yes. We would have said that they, had, they were wrong in coming straight the Supreme Court, whereas the specific jurisdiction about this specific matter is lodged in the High Court. So why would the current Supreme Court panel overlook this and then go, and then go ahead to make this pronouncement? Well, there are decisions, <clears throat> I don't know whether they were cited to them. Um, if they had gone by those decisions, there are seen quite clear that they should have said no. The uh, Afenio Markin, Afenio Markin was wrong to have come in the first place directly to them. They would have said that. Well, I mean, that is to say, um, if they follow the precedents, but in the course of time, and that's the trouble now, because in the course of time, when I was there, there came a certain stage, uh, I used to tell some, because somebody will ask me the law. So I said, I must say, I don't know what the law is. Because, you know, today, the principle is laid down this way. It was laid down some years ago. It's changed today. Some other panel will come and, uh, you know, stay the opposite. And this same members later will go back to the other. Mm. Confusion. This is what has happened now. Huh? Mm -hmm. So there's no certainty in the law. But if you look at it, um, carefully, uh, the weight of judicial precedence on the matter is quite clear. I can give you two examples. I'll give you the Zanator one. Right. There was uh, a, a, a case, I think it uh, won. Uh, there's a chieftaincy provision. If you are convicted of a crime of dishonesty or something, you can't be a chief. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> they brought an action against a, a, a chief. They say he had being convicted, so he should be disqualified as a chief. And this room court said, ah, but this matter is for the chieftaincy tribunals because to it, take involves, a decision. it involves the distillment, the effect is to distill the chief. So that process is given to the uh, uh, chieftaincy tribunals. If they go there and issue of interpretation, they can refer it, but not like they threw it out. Okay. Um, in the case of uh, former Chief Justice Aban, mm. you know, uh, there was this defamation case against uh, one MPP. No, I've forgotten his name. Uh, the 31 December right. uh, case, mm. it's a holiday case. When they decided it, one uh, lawyer, oh, I don't know, I've forgotten his name. He said that when he was sitting in court, he heard Chief Justice Aban referring to <clears throat> the editorial 
mm-hmm. of the Daily Graphic. That he was quoting from the editorial. He was quoting a passage from the editorial of the Daily Graphic. But subsequently, when he realized that it was not so, it was rather in some other column, I think his claim was that just about and varied his judgment to refer to the non-editorial mm-hmm. part, and that he was being dishonest, uh, he was not fit to be a judge, so and so and so and so. So subsequently, they brought an action that C.J. Aban was not fit to have been appointed Supreme Court judge. So they should declare that his appointment was not void. Now the Supreme Court looked at it, and they said, well, <laughs> you see, prima facie, the question they brought is whether he was properly appointed in accordance with the Constitution. And so, looking at 132, mm-hmm. clearly, <laughs> you see straight away that the Supreme Court had jurisdiction. Okay. But what did they say? They said the effect of the relief they were seeking was to remove Aban from the bench. And the procedure for removal of Supreme Court judges, Superior Court judges, so that 146 or so. Mm. And so that is what should govern the matter and not Supreme Court. All right. I got the idea. F- 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 few issues here. I mean, yeah. hopefully tomorrow the, the reason will come. Yes, and as then, I said. And then we'll better understand. If, yes, if the, I read the, and the, I'm convinced. The motivation behind the position that they've taken. <laughs> yes. But until the decision is challenged, this yeah. is what we will have to live with. What do we expect yeah. the Speaker of Parliament to do? Oh, in the face of this decision. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, uh, he's bound by the decision of the Supreme Court. He's bound by it. I have heard the Member of Parliament for Savdai, yes. Rosin Dafi Ameko. Yes. He makes the point that mm. only Parliament can give an effect to the mm. decision mm. by the Supreme Court. Mm-hmm. Is he right? Oh, of course it's addressed to them. But it doesn't mean that if they fail to comply, they are the only people who can... Uh, the Supreme Court, <laughs> there are processes. Mm-hmm. Um, contempt is there, and it's a high crime. Eh? Can be prosecuted, and uh, you have to suffer imprisonment uh, up to ten years. That is, if the court decision is not complied with. Yes, up to ten years. It's not necessarily ten years, but you must just. There's no option of a fine. Mm-hmm. You must just suffer some term of imprisonment, not exceeding ten years. Mm. And not only that, ten years disqualification from holding public office. If you are president, you are liable to remove her mm-hmm. as president. They are all there. Right. So, so parliament is on recess now. Yes. For example, if tomorrow the speaker says that MPs should report to the house for business yes. to start, yes. you expect the four MPs to boldly yes. walk into the chamber and assume their seats. In line with the Supreme Court decision. Mm-hmm. That is what is <laughs> governing the situation now. Mm. Yeah. But the interesting thing is, this, that's why, uh, anyway, <laughs> you see, matters, uh, this country, we want to pretend, but politics has entered everywhere. Why do you say so? I mean, I'm coming. Politics has entered everywhere. These politicians, you know how they operate. They are not interested in the righteousness of the matter, the correctness, but the party inclination. And that is what they, they, they use. So even somebody can know clearly that what he's standing on is wrong, but he'll push it. And uh, well, a court is a court. If you persuade it for whatever reasons, I don't know. Mm. Uh, it adopts your view. That is it. Huh? I before the before the ruling came, yes. Comments that we read on, on social media comments from social commentators, even politicians. Yes. Some a bit created the impression that it was going to go the way it did. Yeah. There appears to be some kind of uh, uh, confidence. Mm. People, people, people appear to have reduced their confidence level mm. in the judiciary to mm-hmm. be impartial mm-hmm. in the adjudication of cases. Mm-hmm. Do you, did you sense that that is what is happening? Oh, but you people are the authorities in this field. Afrobarometer and all these sort of things. Uh, you, when comments from the public are made, 
uh, you are the people <laughs> who mm. pick them up, so you know better. I mean, social media, you can just see. Eh? I, I, I don't think we have ever reached a stage where people easily will express loss of confidence in the course as it's happening. Mm. From Afro barometer to uh, the local citizen. I mean, on a daily basis. Are these comments not, uh, not, 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 not politically motivated? Some may be, but if an issue is right, it does not matter that some are using it politically. It remains right. See what I mean? Mm. So the question of politics, it clouds the matter. But if people want uh, to stay right, you can isolate the pure legal uh, uh, nuances of the situation and go by them. That is it. So, um, <clears throat> me, as I said, I'm subject to the Supreme Court. Mm. Eh? I was there, I'm, not, I'm no longer there. Right. Even when I was there, I, was subject, I couldn't just do anything. If I did something contrary, they could bring an action also. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not used to <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I mean, because you've been there before, yes. the question would then be asked. Yes. Whilst, when you were there, yes. is it the case that some of the decisions that we're taking have some influences outside of what the law says? Well, that's anybody's guess. It's not a legal question. Mm -hmm. When the public have been ascertained to have lost massive confidence in the it's a legal matter. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, as I've always said, the courts belong to the citizen. Mm. They are the sovereign owners of Ghana. Sovereignty resides in the people. Mm. And in fact, even the administration of justice, let me read that. So, Justice William Atuguba is, uh, I guess, here on the pause. Whilst he perused the, 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 the 1992 Constitution, okay. we are just trying to understand. Right. Those who are not convinced, they can go and look at the Constitution. The Constitution says, justice emanates from the people and shall be administered for and on their behalf by the judiciary in accordance with this Constitution. Mm. So they are the repositories of justice. Mm? The, the courts there are their agents. Mm. And that's where we, we, we lose out from the proper perspective of the constitutional order. We are agents of the people for the administration of justice. And their views matter. But, but, but uh, this happened before coming here. Yes. I, I went through the, 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 the appointment procedure in terms of appointing somebody to yes. the yes. Supreme Court to yes. the Chief Justice. Yes. Even though it's done by the President, it is, yes. it is, he, 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 he does it yes. in consultation with the Judicial Council, sometimes mm. with the Council, and Council of State, and mm. then mm. approved by Parliament. Mm. So the process is such that there are checks mm. and balances. Why would people think that because certain judges have been appointed by the mm. president, mm. they will tow towards the line of the government in question. Well, let's uh, take uh, one example. Uh, I, have, I have nothing against that judge. Mm -hmm. As a matter of principle. Right. This judge is taken from the high court straight to the Supreme Court. I don't think he has even done three years in the high court. I'm not aware that any decision of his has been published in any law report. Mm. What then so qualifies? And this person was MPP parliamentary candidate for whole constituency in 2020, I think. Yes. Now, there are so many other judges. In fact, but, during the trial, the lawyer for the speaker yes, requested that he yes, be allowed to recuse himself. Yes, yes. The, the chief justice ruled against that. Yes. Because he was there to interpret the law, In fact, not to tow the, the, the land of any political party. Oh, but, I mean, <laughs> you can, therefore, what you are saying, if you go by that, then no question of bias can ever arise in relation to any officer. Eh? Is, mm. that, is that the realistic <laughs> thing? This... Uh, 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 forces come to play. Now, as I've said, 
Why must that person be hoisted like that? What particularly qualifies what? Over and above his seniors in the high court, in the court of appeal. What is there? Ten years of practice and above. Ten years of practice. In, in what way has he so distinguished himself? You have people who are over 20, 30 something years experience. I mean, let's, let's look at uh, the, the, the brass tack facts of, of a matter and advance ourselves. Because theoretically, anybody can argue anywhere. That's why pretentious positions can be taken and justified in the face of obvious incongruity, dishonesty. This is the trouble. So the danger here for you is that politically exposed persons yes. are to the perception of bias to, as, as it relates to the Supreme Court and the judiciary as a whole. Definitely. But let me qualify it this way. Mm. It's not everybody who has been involved in politics who can be necessarily politically minded. Right. I can say, by speaking for myself, somebody like the late Akoto Ampau, mm. oh, of blessed memory, I can say that as far as I'm concerned, even though he was in the president's chambers, he mm. was his lawyer in the election petition 2020, if I had my way and that man was interested in going to a Supreme Court, I would have appointed him. Because if a legal issue can, he, he will look at it professionally. Mm. Can trust a court power to do that. So uh, the incidents of his politics, uh, you can see from empirical evidence, the way he, but look, even this LGTQ uh, then he was mm. <laughs> probably taking a position nobody has read him to right. take. And some other media rights, he was... The right to information and the likes. Yes, he was doing them, even though maybe against the common mm. interest. But he was doing them. There's another lawyer. If he currently he's a member of parliament, I've never known him, I've never seen him, except on social media, Apia Kubi. Yes, Apia Kubi, a member of parliament for Asante Achim Yes, South. such a person. Mm. If I had my way and he was interested in the Supreme Court, I would put him there because he's a brass stack MPP, but very objective minded, very, very objective minded. But why do you think that the, the, the uh, Justice Gahu is not objective? Oh, well, it depends. <laughs> Look, this man has manifested a certain background. Eh? If you look at uh, Apia Kobi, look at this question of uh, the finance minister, the removal of the finance. Mm. He spearheaded it. Right. It's very strongly and strongly eh? against even, uh, you know, all odds. Mm. Huh? Then uh, he came out not long ago to say that the political system, the electoral system, has been uh, monetized. He, he said it, you know, openly. That's an honest man speaking. He even said he had to use his law practice money to uh, help his campaign. Mm. And that was bad, that kind of thing. Mm. You know, I think he even... Uh, went out to uh, contest as an independent. Uh, so no, he so he so. I think he went back. He saw the member of parliament for on the ticket of the MPP and so contesting the upcoming election on ticket of the MPP. No, but that, uh, I don't know whether he did not. No, or he didn't. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm confusing with right. another man. But you see, looking at some of these traits concerning him, this mm. is a man who will not be bogged down by the fact that he he belongs to. Uh, a party. The MPP. So when you have such things manifesting about somebody, yes, you can see a certain trend or principle. But Justice, how, how, how coming? Yes. Uh, you made me lose my trend. Um, yes, another person I have in that 
uh, vein of thought is Ayikwe Otu. Mm. Ayikwe. Former Attorney General. Yes. Very principled man. Although I was shocked that when uh, uh, Kandapa, the National Security Minister, came out <laughs> saying that... Uh, oh, that they should balance their rulings. Yes. I was surprised that he, Ayikwe Otu, was saying that, oh, he, he, because he's a layman, he that Ah, how? The trend was there. And this man saw it. But apart from that incident, knowing Ayikwe Otu, is he, he respects the law. So how do we cure this negative perception? Another one is have? Gloria Kufu. The former... Yes. And she recently said that the Supreme Court is becoming too predictable in no, their no, rulings. No, no, no. You are confusing her with Sofia Kufu. Sofia Kufu, yeah. Sorry. But, uh, thank you for the correction. Yeah. But when, when we hear such comments that the Supreme Court is becoming too predictable yes. in their rulings, yes. what is wrong with that if they are getting it right? If they are getting it, that's where the, the trouble is. Now, <laughs> let's just wait a minute. What do you think is the reason why the Constitution will say for the adjudication of cases before it, a, min a minimum of five Supreme Court judges should sit on the matter? It's because the matter is very weighty, difficult to handle, and they want uh, the energies of different minds to come out and do their best, and, and then the end arrive at a decision. So, I mean, it, it, it's not impossible that given a certain line of cases, you'll find uh, the court ruling the same way, but not virtually every case, mm. you see? Because in the wake of this present constitution, the MPP brought a number of constitutional actions before the Supreme Court. A string of them were successful mm. against the, the government. Those when you read, you are convinced. Mm. But it was not in perpetuity, virtually in perpetuity. But is that what it did? There came a stage where, mm. you know, decisions were going left and right, you know? But, but, but yeah. that's, is, there no, is there no a danger, a danger here where... I mean, some of these comments put pressure on the judges such that sometimes, even when it's right, mm -hmm. they are looking at balancing their judgment to say that let us go this way so that people will see this as being neutral. Shouldn't they just follow the, the, the desperate and letter of the Constitution? No, 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 no. Look, and that's one of the things you see. I'm an insider. There are certain things maybe uh, not. Look, if you, <laughs> you, you, you are on the bench, eh? mm. you are worried or concerned about your image and the quality of your service, the judgments you come up with. Mm. You are concerned with that. You must make your mark. Eh? So if you are there and you are minded to operate that way, these sort of things will not bother you. Eh? Right. You are convinced on a proper uh, and due consideration of the law. You have researched widely. You, you are convinced that this, you, these kind of things will not bother you because the righteousness of your judgment is soundness in point of law are there to defend. And the bar association, if it is not politically jaundiced, they will sing your praises. They will uphold your, your judgments. But over the years, uh, you know what has happened to the bar too. That's another problem. You say it pretentiously, hey, you are there, so, 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 so. Me, I don't have time. I, I talk only about Ghana and the supreme interest of Ghana. That's all I stand for. Mm. That's all my concern. Don't care about any party. If you are party blue, party red, so long as what you are doing is right, I'm with you. Mm. If you are not and you think, uh, you know, maybe um, I should be uh, sympathetic to you, to us, uh, you are telling lies. Do you think the Ghana Bar Association has lost its team? There's a new leadership in place. What do you expect of them? This new they were, they've just come on board. So uh, you can only see how they operate when they react to important national matters or particular constitutional 
legal matters. But you think it's lost its relevance? Oh, uh, look at the years. Those days of Alajete, E.D. Kom, J.K. Ajeman, and Co. They were very professional. They were interested in the quality of the law, the soundness of the law, and they were standing on that to win their cases. Mm. And it, it gave them good light and some advance to the status of uh, senior advocate of Ghana. Mm. Although <laughs> later they said it was not uh, uh, duly you know, constituted. All right. Uh, but now, there's legislation. Let's look at what they're going. So, uh, 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 just as, before we take leave of you, election yeah. is just a few days, in fact, 25 days away. Right? Yes, yes. Uh, we have people who are campaigning and asking that we vote them to become members of parliament, yes. president. Yes. Uh, your own expectation as we head towards the elections? Yes. My expectations? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, that field, I'm a very poor mind in it. I don't, uh, my world is very narrow. <laughs> uh, don't roam, I don't, you see me in any circle. I mean, you, you've been following the campaign. The people who are bidding to become president, do you yeah, think that yes, they yes. have the quality to lead this country to the next level? Well, that's an issue for any Ghanaian to be able to determine. And it's a simple matter. The, the records of uh, these parties are before you. Eh? They've, been, they've all been there and performed. Mm. And so it's an easy thing to look at. But in Africa, that's not necessarily. And sometimes you can understand. Uh, people are uh, brass tack illiterates. They are just in the village. They don't know about governance and all these things. So uh, some may say we've been born into this party. This, this is their thinking. It's also, <laughs> you know, so you guys are unfortunate, but it's, you can't think like that. Okay. But, you know, I, I, I want to think that um, the pinch of the economy has uh, uh, affected everybody in Ghana. Mm. Galamse has affected everybody. Uh, I'm not saying that these are the only considerations, because... Uh, the government who has done some roads mm. uh, on social media, I was surprised to see the hypocrisy yeah. interchange. The interchange yeah. Hey, wonderful. <laughs> That's a big achievement. Mm. And I think they are doing something on Tema. Yeah, the Tema motor will I've fly I've been there yeah. for a long time. I don't know how far. Uh, you know, but in the end, you know, should be able to strike the balance sheet of uh, their respective performances. And, and do the waiting. Mm. It's a simple thing. Okay. Yeah. That, that's how I think people should should approach the election. And I guess you vote on December 7. Me, I hardly vote. Maybe I'll do it this time. I don't know. Um, I hardly vote. I think I've told you before. You haven't decided yet. When I came on the bench, mm -hmm. I was telling my colleagues that because we are to be completely neutral, mm. let's not vote. So that we are completely uh, neutral. Mm. But I seen there some other disagreed violent. Oh, it's your civic right. You must, uh, you know, exercise it and all that. Uh, later, I understood why some of them were. So <laughs> but that, that is it. Uh, I, I, I'll, I'll vote. Mm. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, retired Justice. William Atikuba has been my guest here on the post, reacting to the Supreme Court decision. Of course, I'll hand it back to you for seeing the studio. Thanks for staying with us here on the post. Indeed, we are your election headquarters. Let's bring you some election-related stories. And the Director of Elections and IT for the NDC, Dr. Edward Manibwama, is accusing the MPP of attempting to rig the next general elections through the special voting exercise scheduled for December 2, 2024. Addressing party supporters at Akoso in the Eastern Region, Dr. Mani Buama urged the party base to closely monitor the process from voting, counting, collation, and declaration to avert what he says are plans by the NPP to manipulate the figures. 
to be seen at the army camp with eager eyes. Eager eyes. Fashion. Fashion or solo. If you say, or solo, I am not just a banana here, but to be a day. Now, I think for Luna, I may say, I'm the one. Assuring supporters of their preparedness to protect their votes, the former communications minister said the party will finish collation of at least 75% of the presidential results by 11 p.m. on December 7. Here I am on NBC, the election directory there, with the support of President Mahama and Chairman Asedun Ketia, the rest assured. Let us by 11 p.m., minimum 75% of the result would have been collated. Minimum 75% of the results would have been collated. And so, we are sending a clear signal, as we did in Asen North, when we collected the result and published it. We are still waiting for the MPP to publish their Asen North results. We are still waiting for the MPP to publish their Asen North results. We at the NDC election directorate by 11 p.m. on December 7, minimum 75% of our results would have been collated. And be rest assured that we shall defend each and every one of you the vote that you will cast. None of them will go astray. Vote massively for John Mahama as president to reset the economy, to reset our country. Vote massively for Teddy to represent you in parliament. Still on the campaign trail, the NDC presidential candidate John Dramani Mahama says a future NDC government will rename the Ministry of Food and Agriculture to the Ministry of Agriculture and Agribusiness. He says value addition to agricultural products is one of the NDC's key priorities as it aims to support farmers to not just um, increase their production, but also create jobs and more opportunity within the agricultural value chain. He was speaking during an interaction with the clergy at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. There's more in this report. The Son of God is coming again and Gospel musician Jack Alono may lead in a singing session at the event. The Great Hall of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology was filled with members of the clergy. Speaking at the event, founder of the Ebenezer Miracle Worship Center, Ebenezer Dakwa Yadom, reiterated his prophecy predicting a win for John Mahama. Last year, 30th He said, God has used me to prophesy. Last year, on the 30th of July 2023, nothing can change it. By the grace of God, John Mahama is going to be president again. God told me, and I said, it, no evil forces can change it. <laughs> In 
his speech, John Mama called for an all-hands-on-deck approach to fight illegal mining, popularly known as Galamsey. And now, I'm going to say, the assassin is USA. If you say Galamsey, I'm going to say, 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 Gold. He said, our land and water bodies are being destroyed, especially through the destruction of our forest for gold. All our water bodies come from the forest. If we continue down this path, our water bodies will dry up. If we are elected, we will ensure that all illegal mining in our forests stops. Those who wash gold in our water bodies must also cease the activities so we can practice responsible mining. Gold, responsible mining. John Mahama says specialized courts will be set up to ensure persons indicted in the Auditor General's report are prosecuted expeditiously. And it's in the billions of cities, billions. Na Public Accounts Committee, we are with Juma. Now, I was a report, a call ministry, no. Now, ministry, no, it take action on recommendation of Public Accounts Committee, I, you know. When the Public Accounts Committee completes its work, the report is supposed to be sent to the relevant ministry for action on the recommendations. However, we need to change this arrangement because often the ministry where the money was embezzled is the same one that received the report, and action is rarely taken. If we are elected, we want the Chief Justice to establish special courts specifically for Auditor General's reports. This way, if an Auditor General's report finds that someone has embezzled state funds, they will be taken to a special court and the case will be dealt with expeditiously. Without this, the theft of state money will continue because there are no real consequences for those who are not punished. Because John Mahama further stated that a future NDC government will implement measures to end the long-standing Boko conflict. He says a future NDC government will rename that great ministry to reflect its new focus of adding value to a great product. And so, Obia and marketing side and agribusiness, Oko Bibia agrikapeja. We have not fully considered the marketing side and agribusiness. In countries where agriculture has developed, after the farmer harvests, there's usually someone on standby to process and add value to what has been harvested. If it's maize, they produce corn flour. If it's tomatoes, they produce tomato paste and other products. If it's cassava, they will produce various products from it. And if it's mango, they will produce fruit juice. That is why I say if we are elected, we will change the name of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture to the Ministry of Agriculture and Agribusiness, he said. The Ministry of Agriculture and Agribusiness. Away from the camp of the NDC, let's shift attention now to the MPP. The presidential candidate of the New Patriotic Party, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, has accused the opposition NDC of campaigning on propaganda in the Busum Tree constituency instead of representing and presenting what he describes as a credible alternative to the NPP's development agenda. Dr. Bamiya made the accusation while addressing a rally in the Busum Tree constituency where he pledged to construct deplorable roads in the Ashanti region if elected president. It's day seven out of the 50-day tour here in the Ashanti region for the New Patriotic Party's presidential candidate, Dr. Mahamudu Baumia, the vice president on day seven, has been touring four constituencies. He started the tour from the Bekwai constituency. He went all the way to the Bosutu constituency, the Asoka constituency, and the Ejusu constituency. <laughs> Yeah, what can I be a cooper? Can you get a new? 
We need peace in the upcoming election. Do not cause mayhem when you go to the polls. We have to make sure that Dr. Mamudu Baumia is elected president of the republic by close of December 7th. I am pleading with you to help make Dr. Mamudu Baumia president of the Republic of Ghana. In the Muslim constituency, the vice president, during his engagement or rally with party faithful, says that the NDC has been peddling falsehood, claiming that the party, which is a new patriotic party, has not neglected the Ashanti region. The vice president says that the NDC is accusing the NPP of not developing the Ashanti region, something that he says is untrue. The NDC continues to pedal falsehood in the Ashanti region. Did they construct our roads for us? Did they construct the roads in the Bosuto constituency for you? They didn't. We, the MPP, started it, and we are going to complete all these projects. Day 7 is completed, and it ended here in the Ejusu constituency. Day 8, the Vice President is expected to move to a profound constituency of Boise East, of Boise West and the Obwasi constituency itself where he will be having a stakeholders meeting and engaging with party faithfuls. For Joy News, my name is Nana Boachi Tampo Yadu, Kumasi. Mufastiano, Emmame, Mufastiano, Emmame, Mufastiano, Emmame, Asoko, Adistiano, Emmame, Bidamwasi, Away from the Ashanti region, the head of training at the Electoral Commission, Dr. Sribo Kweku, says the potential impact of disinformation and misinformation in the upcoming election is concerning. He explained that both social and mainstream media often circulate unverified information, which could pose a significant threat to the electoral process. He was speaking on the sidelines of a workshop organized by Pence Byte Plus to address the dangers of disinformation. Dr. Sriba Kweko urged mainstream media outlets to exercise caution and refrain from amplifying unverified information on social media. And uh, I said that my greatest fear for 2024 is misinformation because both the traditional and the social media at times are in a hurry to put in the good for information without checking the authentication of it. So I'm, I'm saying that uh, I am seeing ahead of us where people were coming out with uh, some videos or videos that may not even be related to Ghana's election. So we have had instances where there was a video and they attributed to the digital level election. I don't know whether it was that. And the person was in green jacket. When everybody knew that in Ghana we don't use green jacket. So my, my advice to the media houses here is that they need to be very careful and cross-check every information they will get. Other than that, they may be misled and also join the flow of disinforming and misinforming people. Because you wouldn't be surprised that somebody may be churning out his results from somewhere. The person who realized that the person is losing wouldn't mind sponsoring people to show videos and the rest about how relations were being rigged, how relations are being uh, on two issues are being done, and my advice to the media that we need to wear circumspect. Ghana, we have only one Ghana. So, every information that we put across, at times you think that you are doing for doing sick, but somebody may take it seriously. There are many times where you meet somebody, you ask the person, the person says something, what did you hear of that? I heard it from the radio, I heard it from the media. So, they see that the, whatever comes out of media is cross check and it is. Uh, without doubt, the truth. 
He also revealed that the EC has resolved to provide periodic and timely updates to the media during this year's election to curb the negative impact of disinformation. Running that for this year's election, we'll be updating the public through the media regularly so that people will know. But still, we are, if you are doing it, somebody's also counting, there are two different issues. Because you know, there are some people who are uh, fixative and who are dog, so dogmatic in such that whatever comes from some people or from their party is the gospel truth. So if everybody does not commit himself or herself to the truth, you may become out of the figures, but they will be, they will be this, uh, delivering them because the other side is saying whatever is saying is the truth. But we have only one gun. So everything, I, mean, I always say that let the truth in our activities because posterity will judge us. That's how we wrap up the bulletin. For more news, please log on to my journal.com. My name is Faustina Safo. Have a pleasant afternoon as you enjoy the rest of our programs.